high rad tech. We can use it very, very much in the clinical setting. We can use it in the classroom as we're lecturing on this. So it's just invaluable to us. Pull up the picture of the film and say, okay, what's this, what's that, what's that, what's this, what's this? And then that reinforces that uh, learning and also know, they know that we're going to come by and quiz them, so they better be up on it. It could be on a phone, it could be on your iPhone or your Droid. It can also be on a mini iPad or even our regular size one. So let's just look at a chest and then it shows the actual um, positioning so that with our visual learning that we have, they can see right then and there how the positioning looks. The shield has to be in place and um, where the central ray goes. They wanted to write a note about, uh, let's say a, a technique factor or whatever they want to put, they can uh, start typing that in and then it's there. And if they want to keep it or they can delete it, they can write their own little notes for that. And then the nice thing, this one showed that as well. But you notice it didn't have any kind of image of what the final thing should look like. So this now does show them an ideal, of course, chess, which we know in the real world doesn't exist. But at least that's what we're attempting to get. Handy base for iPad. Database manager. Our handy <coughs> base is basically... Um, the way we keep our data on all of our students in the clinic site, it shows when they went in, they have to sign in and out on it, uh, any competencies they've done, their daily record of exams. There's, a, this is our whole life right here in this handy base. Educreations Interactive Whiteboard. One of the courses I teach is image production, and it gets kind of technical. And you find yourself in the world and, and talking about um, various concepts in producing the image, whether it be circuitry of the x-ray tube or just image production, the end result on your image. Okay, I'm going to draw a graph. I talk a little bit first, and then I start drawing it. So when you add filtration, Useful Let's say we start out at 100 and let's take it up to about, let's go to 600. See, so I understand I'm yeah. going slow for our the students for are our curves. I can now give somebody an example, a visual example, which I know all of you. All of, I know I'm a visual learner, and I know most of our students are, am I correct? Especially in the health sciences. But I think it's such an awesome tool, and thank you so much for showing it to us. Teacher kit. Okay, so the first app that we're going to show you that we learned about in our class in May is Teacher Kit, mm -hmm. which we love. I don't know if everybody's using it, but everybody should be. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's great. We took pictures of all of our students. Okay, when we had them in for orientation. So by the first week of school, we were done. We knew their names. So that worked very well for us. So every day we took attendance, and this will list, and you can go back and look over the semester. Why were they absent? And you can put a note in there saying this is why. So we found this app great. It was very useful. Radiopedia. Well, we're teaching chest x-rays. Learning chest x-rays is a big part of what we do because we have to round with physicians in the intensive care units. So we have to do x-ray rounds with the physicians and sometimes we're, um, we're giving the interpretations to the physicians. So our students really need to um, embrace chest x-rays, understand them fully, and you know we're really limited with what we can find on the internet to show that like to put in our, our presentations and our PowerPoints. There's not a lot to put on the PowerPoints. Also our old views that the the hard copy films that we have, we don't have a lot. So Radiopedia was one of them that we that we have purchased. Um, and it shows details here of the chest x-rays. So we each have these on our um, iPads. And 
the cost is free to four ninety nine. So really not a big cost, oh, not but it does help a lot with um, whatever system you want. So you could buy it, it's per system. So, so we bought the thoracic system. Okay, so any system you want to purchase, you can buy it, and they have lots of different case studies um, in each one. So we have the thoracic uh, chest X-ray uh, pack. And what it does is you actually, it kind of goes over a clinical presentation, if you will. The history, patient's complaints, and they give them, you, it gives them the picture of the patient. Then it shows the chest x-ray. And then we have to ask the, the students, okay, so what's your interpretation? What do you think is going on with this patient? As you can see, we need to see details like an endotracheal tube and the bifurcation of the carina. So we need to have it enlarged and have details, have good pictures. We purchased the chest x-ray packs, okay? So here we have, we're gonna go into volume two. So I've already, like before the lecture, decided which ones I'm gonna pull up to test them on. So I'd say to the class, okay, so here we have a female, she comes in, her oxygenation's decreased. This is her x-ray. Turning point. The last is uh, Turning Point, which, thanks to you guys, was very awesome. We started using it in the summertime, and it's a bit of work, as Nina knows, putting it into the PowerPoints, but what a difference it makes. You know, it really breaks up a three-hour class, and it helps us to understand what do they, what do they know? Because you're just, you're, you teach them a segment, and then you start asking questions. It's like a whole segment that we would teach, and then we would then we'd come up with a PowerPoint question. I mean, a, a question here. So we would say, what chest X-ray view is best used to identify excess pleural fluid? So they should know that because we just taught it to them. So then we find out: did 100% answer, or did is it across the board? Do we need to re-explain what we just taught? Okay, and the answer is lateral decubitus. I mean, it helps us with more of the uh, more difficult concepts because then we have to go back again. We explained. They didn't follow what we were saying. Hippocrates. It's very hard when you're in an emergent situation to try and find a drug, especially when you're trying to find out the interaction between someone who's on maybe 15 or 20 drugs at one time. So trying to flip through this book and going, okay, remember this one, remember this one, remember this one, it gets very, very difficult. It's very simple because what we do is when we're going through it, we can use this feature. We can click right here where it says drugs. And we can find out what something is. If we don't know what the drug that we're using, we can figure out exactly what the, what the drug is. And we can write some information in and actually determine what the pill is. So if we find pills laying on the floor, we can readily use this application. In addition, we can also type in all the different types of drugs or the type, all the different drugs that that patient is on. And we can find out if there are any kind of contraindications or interactions that are going to happen between the meds. So our rationale was that because of the constant change in the number and types of medications available to patients, as well as the growing number of potential interactions that they're assuming with those medications, it's imperative that the paramedic student and the paramedic have a reliable means to identify medications that may be, in fact, the direct cause of the patient's medical emergency. We have a 45-year-old male who explains he's having severe chest pain. He states that he has benign prostate hypertrophy. And he takes Tadalafil 5 milligrams four times a day. The patient states his chest pain is crushing. What is going to be your treatment plan? And as we told him it was free, next thing you know you saw everyone's iPhones and iDroids come out. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I got the app now. I got the what app. Is Second, it decreased the time significantly required for them to identify a medication, again, that might be um, causing the patient's medical emergency, um, and also um, help them with looking for potential interactions. If they find what we call the polypharmacy, we walk into the 85-year-old's house and the grocery bag of medications is laying on the table. So to help them identify potential interactions. By the way, both of those factors um, help the paramedic student to make the appropriate choice for effective safe care of the patient. And again, last but not least, they are absolutely ecstatic that this can be used as a study aid outside of class. Eponyms. So 
if you discover something or you invent something or you're the first person to land on something and you name it after yourself, and if you're like me, you, who wouldn't, um, then you've produced an eponym. So it's something that's named <laughs> after a person. Um, in the medical field, it can be things like a disease or a symptom. Um, radiology, there's some positions, I guess, they are named after individuals. So that's what an eponym is. Um, the nice thing about eponyms is that it has lots of entries. So there's more than 750 eponyms in this little particular app. Um, it's updated frequently, so the person, Andrew Yee and his company, update it often enough. If you have something that you would like them to add, you can ask them, submit the appropriate documentation to the software users, and they will add it in there for you. So it's, it's fairly um, comprehensive. Um, it's categorized pretty nicely. There are, it's categorized either alphabetically or you can go based on systems like cardiac, radiology, um, endocrine, and there's a, a random. Um, you can get it on lots of different formats. You can get it for Android, for Pocket PC, for Palm. We have it on our iPhone and iPad. You can even get it, get it downloaded as a PDF file. So no matter what kind of a, um, a user you are, you can probably have access to Eponyms, the app. So you can look for things, like I said, alphabetically. If you know that you're looking in biochemistry, my favorite topic, um, or whatever. Um, the students in nuclear medicine, because we use it kind of briefly, they thought it was pretty, pretty easy to use, especially if you could load it into your, your iPhone, because, like I said, they all have smartphones. Um, they liked the phone format better because it was smaller. Um, they liked the idea that it's almost like a flash card, so if you wanted to test yourself, I'll show you the um, kind of built-in system for that, so if you wanted to test it, you could. It's a nice reference source. Um, the only problem we had was there's not much in it for the actual, for nuclear medicine, which is probably true of most apps anyway. But there were a few things in there that they thought they could use. Littman Sound Builder. The other thing I found was the Lipton, Littman Sound Builder. Um, we don't do that much in nuclear medicine as far as listening for heart sounds, but if it's part of something that you do, um, you can choose um, a particular heart sound. If you have a stethoscope, it'll play that sound, and you can have the student listen to it and identify different heart sounds. So if that's it doesn't do lung you... sounds? Hmm? Yes. It does? Mm -hmm. Must-see radiology. So the other thing that we kind of liked was this must-see radiology. But what they did was they, he comes up with a case, like 54-year-old presents with acute left-sided weaknesses, and then you can view the case. So they're going to show you the... Um, anatomy. In this case, this is a CT scan. And the whole idea of what he did this was, too, was to make it more interactive because most of the time you look at a book, like one of those books, you see this, you know, see that image. You don't see the whole series. Mm -hmm. When you do CT, I mean, you're talking 20, 40, 50 images mm -hmm. in a row. But with this app, you can actually scroll through them. Like, watch That's that so one. cool. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Wow. So, so you, cool. it's actually he's, oh, it's mimicking being at a PAC system which is a picture archival system. So the, what the radiologists really use day to day. So you can actually scroll through the whole thing like you would be doing at a PAC station. Because it also, if there's a nuclear medicine, it will have the relative maybe chest x-ray. So the students get a real feel for the fact that it's usually multimodality when you're in the hospital. Mm -hmm. It's not just the, the patient had a, a VQ scan, but they probably, well, they certainly had a chest x-ray. But there are a lot of things that go into the diagnosis, so. Lab gear. It's an app that we could use not only in nursing but any uh, programs in allied health to go over lab values, uh, medications, uh, drug toxicities, things like that. If you look here, one of the first things it tells you that you can do is kind of like look at a panel of labs. And like I said, this is for everyone, not just for nursing. But we can go to sort and look at all the categories here. So you have blood, you can look at uh, cardiovascular. So if we go on to cardiovascular, we can look at things like, what's the normal cardiac output? For students, it gets students engaged, okay? You know, students want to use their phones anyway, right? But we can use it to engage them in learning and go over different lab values and to complete a case study. Uh, clinical practice, uh, it incorporates theory, what we do in classroom, into practice and how do we apply it and how do we use it. So I think it helps the student in that way as well.